Hello Megalithomaniacs. So we're here once again at Carahan Tepe in December 2022 for the winter solstice. We've got this beautiful sunrise occurring behind me. You can kind of see that over there. And the very side of the head in the AB pit or the pillar shrine. Once again, like we saw last year when we discovered this, it's starting to get illuminated. But we're actually here a bit earlier and the sun's actually come out a bit earlier because last year we had cloud cover at the very beginning. So it's a real treat to have the permission to do this. We're very, very happy about this. Uh, we obviously can't go in the pillar shrine. We're standing inside the uh, uh, space you're supposed to stand in, but we've got cameras set up and we're getting it all on video just for you. So happy winter solstice, everybody. Please uh, let us know what you think about this alignment. We've done a full article about it on Graham Hancock's website. Videos about it. Andrew's here as well, so he could witness this. And we've got some of uh, our Turkish friends with us as well. And um, let's get in there and let's uh, get the footage. Let's see uh, if we can prove that this would have worked, you know, 9,000 BC. See the sun rising behind us on the horizon. Uh, just above a notch in the hill now, it rises slightly to the left of the notch. So we're taking readings to see if there's any uh, interesting features here. And, uh, and we're noticing a few things already. We've got Andrew here. He's uh, kind of checking out this alignment. We're hoping to see what we can see. Obviously, we found this originally last year, but we've come here for three. I've been here for three mornings just to see what else we can find. And we've noticed down here, there's a whole bunch of stones. Now, we're not sure. There's a dog there as well. This stone here, this stone here, potentially these, now we're debating this as we speak, are kind of forming the alignment. You can kind of see my shadow there towards, uh, towards the stone, towards the hole itself, which then illuminates the head. So it starts around here, and then the sun, as it rises, kind of makes you see my shadow. It moves probably to where my shadow is to about that point there, shining through the hole, illuminating the head. So we've got time lapses of the head on previous days, but because the sun stands still on the winter solstice for a few days, we're gonna get pretty much the same readings. And then we're gonna see if this works. We've already looked at this actually, Andrew and Rodney Halev, to see if it works back during the construction time, like 9,000 or so BC. I think what's interesting is that I can see through the porthole now, I can see the head, um, but up to the left of that I can see our shadows, uh, and obviously it's because we're in the way of the sun, so as our shadows just gradually move into line, we'll know exactly when it actually goes inside the shrine itself and hits the light, which we'll obviously see anyway but the marker of, of how close it is, is clearly our shadows and their movement. And of course, the shadow of this lovely dog that we have with us as well. So, you know, also the other thing is that, that the low angle that the sun would have crossed over the great ellipse itself. I mean, was there some kind of, um, you know, opening that goes down into it from here, you know, a very low point, just. A you know, just a, a couple of meters off of the, uh, the the level of the retaining wall. I think probably the answer is yeah. But I mean, it's quite extraordinary being here, um, and it's very clear that this site and the other Tastepla sites are about the movement of the sun. You know, that seems to be incredibly important for them to synchronize into that cosmic awareness basically and uh, we're seeing it in action at this very minute so one idea that i kind of was thinking about was that the front pillar the one nearest us the massive tall pillar would actually block the first maybe 15 minutes of the sun while it's on the side of the head and then it would pop out around the side of the pillar and illuminate the last 10 15 minutes so it would actually like control the sunlight going in if it if it's in a specific position um but not you know if it's in the way it's in the way but if it's in the specific position it might block the sun for a few minutes and then the light would come round it and it'd be quite spectacular it'd come around the side of a pillar upright and then go in between them and then illuminate the head so there we have the sunrise there we have the porthole stone 
and there we have the head starting to get illuminated on the winter solstice morning 2022. We're here in the morning of the 22nd of December at Karahan Tepe in southeast Turkey. It's at least 11,000 years old to 11,400 years old is the oldest dates they've got from here. And we found this remarkable winter solstice sunrise alignment where it shines through the porthole stone onto the stone head. You can start to see it now. Now, this is really interesting because we've tested this, Andrew Collins and Rodney Howe. Uh, to see if it works 9,000 BC, like 11,000 years ago. And it seems to work. And it, you know, the fact is you can still see it now because the movement of the obliquity of the ecliptic procession hasn't changed that much. Maybe slight variations, which we've looked at, which we're gonna look at again now we have all the new readings. Obviously you can see the article we wrote before we came here this year, because we discovered it last winter solstice 2021. And you can see what we've written there, but also we now have new data, we're going to update this because this is a remarkable and it has remarkable uh, you know, alignment and it has massive connotations as to what was going on here you know, 11,000 years ago. We have another alignment which Andrew's worked out, the summer solstice sunset which we'll have a look at and have Andrew talk about in a moment. But this one is what we're here for this time, to sort of witness this and experience this and document it the best we can. So look out for the article on grahamhancock.com. Look out for a previous video looking at this and also um, a new edition, new episode really of Ancient Aliens is gonna be going into the depths of research here at Karahan Tepe. Obviously also featured on Ancient Apocalypse as well. Taking time-lapse shots from various different angles on various different days so you can have a good look at the way the sun illuminates the head precisely. We must remember it may have been a little bit different you know 11,000 years ago. It may, it may have even illuminated the head even better. So it proves that they were working with the solstices. This is what we've discovered and this is linked often with farming and agriculture which we now know was developed soon after the construction of Gebekli Tepe and Karahan Tepe. But there's also the symbolism here. It's so much symbolism relating to fertility, JJ's found goddess symbolism, the cut marks. We have the strange carvings up on top that look like kind of calendar notches or something. And we have water channels. We have evidence of um, symbolism, much like Gebekli Tepe, but a little bit different. And there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. So we can see already that the sunlight has moved around the head from the very side of the head, almost behind the head. And it kind of goes, as the sun rises, obviously the shadow, or sorry, the light through the porthole stone will go downwards and around the sort of mouth, chin, neck area of the head. Although in ancient times, it could have been slightly different, maybe even illuminating more of the head. We must, you know, we must also notice that perhaps, which we just in here, if we look at one of the main, the main central pillar there lying on the ground, that may have actually partly blocked the alignment. And this is just a theory. We need, we don't know this, and we don't know if we ever will because we don't know where the sockets were that these went in the ground. And it may have actually, I believe, and I hypothesise that it may have blocked the first maybe ten or fifteen minutes of the alignment. So then the sun, as it rotated and rose through the sky, it would pop around the side in between the two pillars and then suddenly start illuminating the head, like probably from around now, from what you can see now, about 15 minutes after the first light hitting the head. Now, that may be not correct, so don't, you know, I'm not going to be quoted on that or anything, but that is a, it's an observation that uh, could help us pinpoint exactly where these two fallen central pillars, which are badly damaged and broken, may have actually originally been placed. And we may be able to work that also based on the geometry. I've looked at the geometry, Andrew's looked at a more elliptical version of the geometry. And so there may be some clues in that which we may be able to decipher with more research and more observations like we're taking right now. So I just want to emphasize that this is day three here. The first day was the 19th of December. We also came back on the 21st of December and now on the 22nd of December. And this whole solstice period period is 
pretty much the sun stays in the same place over the winter solstice. It's, you know, solstice means the, the stopping of the sun, you know, where it stays in the same position more or less for a few days before around the 24th or 25th, Christmas Day, starts moving forward and the light returns. Now in this second part of an article that JJ Ainsworth and I have done, we look at the symbolism of this and the meaning that we think may be connected with that, with this site. Now even ideas about kind of fertility rituals, dances, um, and goddess symbolism, and the use of water, and also the solar orb, but also the lunar orb, because we're gonna look at all this in the, the second part of our article on grahamhancock.com. We must also remember that and we had Andrew and Rodney, they had a good look at this. During the summer solstice period, not only do we have this remarkable alignment with the AA pit, the subterranean kind of unfinished pit, we also have the lunar orb, the moon, would follow the same path as the sun on the winter solstice, but at the summer solstice, and it would actually possibly illuminate the head, much like we have the solar illumination now, we may have had a lunar illumination near or around the time of the summer solstice, obviously during the night. And so there's all sorts of possibilities here that are still being deciphered, still being worked out. We must also remember that there are other researchers that put ideas about this being a loony solar calendar, Martin Sweatman amongst others. There are other ideas that Andrew's discovered at Gebekli Tepe. And now Andrew believes there's more at some of the other Tastepola sites, even before some of them have been excavated. Well, he's noted notches and hills and things like this that may be relevant. We're here at Karahan Tepe at a very magical time. This is the winter solstice. Uh, this is the uh, second occasion that I've been here with uh, Hugh and obviously JJ as well. And we are observing the incredible phenomena that takes place in connection with the Pillars Shrine. Because the sun, shortly after it rises, will pass right the way across what we call the Great Ellipse, this is structure AD, through the porthole, which is this small hole here, entering into the Pillars Shrine, which is structure AB. And what happens is that the dagger of light piercing through the chamber hits this enormous head with this long serpentine neck. And this is something that happens not just today but would have happened 11,000 years ago when it was first created and that if there'd been a roof on here which it seems as if there would have been because there's like this level area immediately above the top of the head and all around the sides then that would have been the only light that actually penetrated into this chamber and I think that if somebody was involved with a experiential uh, ritual at this time, this would have allowed them to believe that they were communicating with the head. The head was coming alive and uh, I believe that they may well have seen this as some kind of celestial intelligence. Um, but this is not something that's in isolation. We've also found uh, another alignment towards sunset at the time of the summer solstice for 9000 BC in connection with this third interconnected uh, structure which is AA, uh, I call it the, the pit shrine uh, and this is a, a very strange and very unique uh, place with this uh, huge hole in the floor, this strange lip feature as I call it uh, over the edge and uh, long curved bench at the back of it into the west wall. So now it's 8.50 a.m. and you can see how the head, the top part of the head is now illuminated. It's come over the top of the porthole and now it's actually illuminating that part. So is that part of the design or not? Did it actually have a roof over it so that wouldn't have happened? Or would they have left a gap in the roof here? There's big question marks about that if that's actually part 
of the original winter solstice illumination um, effect. But overall, I think we can see, and we think we can kind of guarantee, you know, at, because this is direct observation we're making, and it's not speculation, that this is a valid, genuine winter solstice alignment. And now we've got confirmation that the porthole stone, the top part that appeared to be broken, it wasn't actually broken. They just repaired it and tightened it up to keep it safe so it wouldn't fall. So that's brilliant because people have said that, oh, that's not gonna work, you know, because it was broken, but no, it wasn't broken. They just put it back more carefully and how, so it would hold it in place. So there's lots to consider here um, at Carahan Tepe, but now we have this kind of pretty tight proof of this winter solstice alignment, possibly a summer solstice sunset alignment. It's a really interesting kind of element bringing back a very, you know, sort of very early winter solstice um, orientation, which is possibly the earliest in the world. So we're just finishing up the kind of winter solstice, full illumination of the stone head here in the pillar shrine or the AB structure, AB pit. And it's been beautiful, beautiful day. It's actually really warm and sunny, in a, even though it's the mid winter the shortest day, the longest night. So while we're here, people will be at Stonehenge celebrating. They'll be at Karnak, also in Egypt. They'll be at uh, various sites around the world, Newgrange, uh, which are all aligned, like Karahan Tepe, to the winter solstice sunrise alignment. So to be here at this new discovery that we found here last year, is a real treat and we've got the perfect weather we're hopefully going to come back although cloudy days have been predicted over the next few days so we're going to wait and see but we're going to now going to look at some other aspects of the site we've had a good chat we're getting um, some new information from the landowners here about the original name of the site discoveries that have been made how things were when they were kind of excavating and um, and also the new artifacts and we're finding out when they're going to be on display so we look forward to seeing them but they may not be on display during our trip here but they should be by may when we return for a big tour we're doing in ancient turkey with myself andrew and jj so we're delighted that we were here this time last year to witness this we're delighted we're back here this time so we've had a remarkable time here we've pretty much confirmed what we saw last year We've seen some other aspects of the site we haven't covered in other videos. There's a new excavation, there's much more. So please subscribe, please watch our other videos on Karahan Tepe. And of course you can join us. We come back here every May, every September on organized tours. We get special access to sites such as this and Gebekli Tepe and other sites. So thanks for watching Megalithomaniacs. Happy winter solstice and we'll see you next time.